Hey everyone, how's it going? Today I'm trying out a game called Life of a Save Crystal. It's a pretty interesting concept for a game. Um, well, it might be easier if I just jump in and uh, start explaining. So, uh, introduction. Dear Save Crystal number 314, I'm happy to inform you about your immediate transferal to a new area. This will be an exciting time and a great opportunity for you. We wish you the best of luck. Uh, P.S. We might have connected you with random memory for graphical assets instead of the usual item storage. We, ha we will have a fix for the issue in a few days, so please hang in there and read the instructions. With love, the developers. Uh, the emergency instructions say you are responsible for saving and loading the items of a few heroes. Only items, not levels, name, stats, or inventory. We have routed those information to backup systems. In in time, heroes will come and try and save through you. You will be presented with the list of items to recall. Important for you are only the prefix and the suffix of those items. To help you remember, you have access to graphic assets to the left. They are not per per they are not a perfect match, so you have to be creative. Okay, so this is where you really get into the game. So you see that there's this list of objects at the left here. Uh, basically, as the game explained, we don't actually have actual representations of the items these uh, characters will have. So we have to like use these items to kind of help us describe what item they have. So let's say like uh, they have an iron piece, they have like an iron sword. Well, maybe I'll use this iron cross here to represent an iron sword or something. Or maybe they have like a yellow, uh, like a yellow bangle or something. Well, I can use this coin to kind of represent the color yellow, and then maybe like a croissant to show like uh, this like a crescent shape around the arm or something. I don't know. You have to like kind of associate the objects that the players have or that the characters have with the the ones that uh, you have to like kind of memorize. Uh, so it might be easier just to see that you can make relationships by like right clicking as well to kind of show what's related to what. And uh, the reason you want to do that is because you're going to have to like save the game for different kinds of characters. So without further ado, oh, you can also, uh, well, if this will let me, you can also pick up the item and then right click to delete it. All right, so check mark. Uh, emergency instructions, there are three kinds of requests you encounter. A save request, you have to remember the initial loadout of a hero. A change request, and a hero switches an item for another, so you have to update your memory and a load request. You have to restore the items of the hero from memory. Don't make many mistakes. So you're allowed up to five mistakes as shown here. Uh, mistakes made, 05, and then load requests, you need to do five of them successfully. I think uh, that was at 10 uh, before, but uh, they changed that recently in an update. So yeah, so we have Huck the Barbarian here. So he has a hammer, it's tattered. So we need something to represent a hammer and tattered, and then we'll also use an object to represent Huck. So I think, you know, barbarians are kind of from the mountains or in the wild, so we can use a mountain to represent that, to represent him as a person. And a hammer, what can we use for a hammer? Well, how about this uh, plier that's like in a toolbox, you know, in real life? So maybe that can be represented as a hammer and then the prefix here is the most important part. We need to remember that it's tattered. So what would be a good display for that? I think that broken mirror looked pretty promising down here. Yeah, so we can relate this right here. And we can also just relate this plier to this mountain to show that it belongs to Huck. So it's basically you have to imply that things are related to one another and also kind of like memorize your own definitions of things. Uh, it's a pretty interesting concept for a game and I've actually uh, was having a lot of fun with it. So yeah, next let's do the uh, chainmail of venom. So we need something to represent chainmail. Um, let's see, how about this saddle? This saddle might be okay. Um, and then a venom, we can use a snake. Perfect. I believe you can move the piece around. I just uh, forgot how. Um, I think it's middle mouse button or... Oops, I did not mean to do that. 
Also, if you delete the uh, item, then the relations you have with it are kind of destroyed as well, so we gotta be careful. Um, I forgot how to rotate items. Let me, uh, let me look it up real quick. Okay, I'm back. So you can use Q and E to uh, rotate the tile. So you can pick it up and then you press Q and or E to uh, rotate it in one or the other direction. And it's pretty cool because you can uh, kind of fit everything in here because you're going to have a lot of characters to memorize. So yeah, let's, uh, we got our chain mail of Venom here. here. So let's relate this, uh, relate this uh, chain mail back to the mountain here that represents Huck. And then we have a skull of magic. So we can use, how about a grave to represent something like death or something? Oops. We can kind of fit this in uh, the middle here. And magic we can represent with, hmm. I guess uh, like a broom, cause like a witch or something, you know? So we can relate these two and then we can relate this to the mountain. All right, so now we have his like entire inventory and character kind of stored here. So yeah, we can, we just have to wait for him to come back to maybe update it or to load and then we can, um, okay, we have an update request, cool. So he wants to replace his hammer, his tattered hammer with a, a yellow hammer of doubt. So our hammer was this plier here, so we can keep that, but now it's not tattered anymore, so we have to remove this mirror. And we have to replace it with something yellow and something that represents doubt. Hmm. Well, yellow, we can use that coin. So let's take this and relate it to this, and then Doubt? I'm not sure. I guess a cloud? You know, that kind of makes sense. We can kind of flip it this way. Yeah, that, that might work. Um, all right. Sure, let's uh, let's go with that. Okay, so now we're just waiting for another request. It's cool that it kind of times you, so maybe if uh, there's some replayability if you want to like kind of beat your score. There's so much treasure around. So we have another character here, uh, Pia the Clever. So this character has a dagger and it's a magic dagger. So we need to make a character that represents this person. A rogue would be represented by maybe a key. That, that kind of makes sense to me. And uh, we can use the dagger. How about a pencil? That, that would probably work. I'll put the pencil down here and I'll relate it to this. And then it's a magic dagger. So what do we use for magic? Did we use anything for magic? I guess we could use this key for magic. Oh wait, we already have a key to represent the rook, okay. Hmm. Magic, magic, well, maybe this olive branch could uh, be something with magic. Let's just uh, attach it there. And then a cloak of freezing, so we need a cloak, something to represent a cloak, let's see. Hmm. What would be a good object to associate that with? Uh, maybe a cloud? Yeah, let's let's use a cloud. Why not? Um, and then we need something to represent freezing. What's something cool? Oh, a mountain. Duh. <laughs> okay. Cool. And then we'll put that back to the key. And then we have a ring of quickness. So, a ring, what would represent a ring really well? Oh, maybe this, cause it's like a circular shape. That might, that might kind of work. And then quickness, what's really fast that we can use? Something that represents speed. Maybe this bird, that could, that could be something we could use. Yeah, let's use the bird, why not? Okay, I might need to adjust this inventory here. Okay, so we got a, oh, so it's a ring. So I'll relate them and then I'll take the ring and relate it here. Okay, cool. All right, so I think we're uh, we're good on that end. Now there is kind of like a major flaw, I suppose. I don't know if it's a right thing to call it a flaw, but we have an update request. 
Okay, so we have to... Uh, I'll go on in a second, but... uh, Well, actually, I'll just try to do this right now, and... uh, Well, actually, it's better to talk about it. <laughs> I'm changing my mind too much. But uh, I guess what the major, like, quote-unquote flaw is, is that you could just kind of write everything down and not have to, like, use this tile grid at all. But I, I think it's more of a thing where it's like you have to trust that the player is going to play along with the rules, you know? Because if the player is not going to play along with the rules, then it's just kind of meaningless to play this in the first place. So, yeah, you kind of you have to trust the player is going to be a good sport about it. Because I could literally just write down all these like names and just like replace them as they, as they update or whatever. And then I'll have all the, like, I mean, I, I don't even need to memorize them. I just kind of see the list or whatever. So, yeah, it's one of these games where it's, like, you kind of just have to trust the player is going to, like, play by the rules and, like, you know, have a fun time with it. Um, just assume that they don't cheat, you know? Um, anyway, uh, we have to replace this cloak uh, with a tiny of the falcon. Tiny cloak of the falcon. So our cloak was freezing, right? So this was this cloud, right? So we'll keep that. Uh, the freezing part was the mountain, so we'll get rid of this. So now it's tiny. We can use this to represent tiny, I suppose. Um, is that a seed? I think that's a seed, yeah. And then we need a falcon. So I guess we have to use another bird? That's probably the most obvious. Okay. And then I can probably move these around now to make some room. There we go. We haven't gotten any load requests yet, so once we get one of those, you can see how this works. Oh, load requests again. Okay, here we go. Perfect. So Pia, we have to, now we have to actually add the prefix and the suffix of uh, what the items were. So Pia had a dagger and the dagger was represented by this olive branch. So what was that about? Was it a magic dagger? I actually don't remember because I was doing commentary the entire time. Uh. I think uh, it was a magic dagger, yes? We'll see how incorrect I am. And then we have a cloak, which is represented by this cloud. It was tiny, I believe. And it was uh, swiftness or quickness? Right. Or was it something else? Oh, the falcon. It was the falcon, right? Because we used a bird. And... The last one was a ring of, hmm, what did the bird represent again? See, this is where the difficulty comes in. You kind of have to like, uh, quick, was it quickness? You kind of have to like, uh, make sure that you remember what you uh, used that symbol for, you know? Um, I am actually not sure. I think, uh, I think it's quickness. It must be, right? All right, let's try this. Hey, nice. <laughs> All right, so there, I got one loaded and uh, hey, load request one out of five, pretty good, right? And uh, yeah, it's just a really fun time, honestly, if uh, you, you play by the rules and uh, save request, better safe than sorry. Okay, we have a new character here. So we have Isabel the long-haired mage. Um, so we need something to represent a mage first. Or maybe just represent Isabella. I think it helps that you kind of associate the class too, just because it kind of helps you. Uh, let's let's use this uh, this flower thing as one of the characters. Also, I try to keep all my characters on the left side here, and then the items to the right, so you kind of like have some like organizational like awareness of what things are, because uh, these are just items that represent things that people have. So um, this wand this is a wand of wisdom. What represents what represents wisdom? Hmm. A wand of wisdom. Let's see. I think maybe an olive branch. It's not the best idea, but I'll, I'll kind of do it. Sure. Uh, let's see, a robe of darkness. What could represent a robe? Huh. 
a robe. I guess uh, this cloud might represent a robe of darkness, but it has to represent actual darkness, so... Oh, maybe this torch, because uh, it can light a dark area. Is there anything better? I guess this seed is kind of like pitch black, like a... Yeah, yeah, we could, we could try that. Oh, whoops, uh, I, I apologize. I made a mistake with the connections here. So I need to pick this up, delete this. Um, I need something that represents a wand and then something of wisdom, because this Isabella represents this little garnish here. So let's use this as a wand. And then wisdom, we can still use the olive branch that we had. So we'll do that. Okay. It's gonna be a little complicated, but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll have to manage here. And we have a hat of darkness. A hat, let's see. Is there anything you would put on your head? Maybe you have your, your head in the clouds? That could be a thing. Um, hmm. darkness. I'll use the seed again to represent darkness, that's for sure. And then a hat. I guess a clover you could put on your head. I think, uh, you, but I already used a cloud to represent the robe. Uh, this technically could go on someone's head, I guess. Sure, well, well, we'll just improvise here. I guess it's limited to how creative you are, you know? Like, if you can come up with, like, some crazy connection to things, then, like, you'll probably be better off. Um, okay, yeah, let's, uh, check the... Let's, uh, that's Isabella or whatever, that mage. So we have three characters we're so serving right now. Update request. Okay, so a hat... Sh a sharp hat of death, okay. Uh... So this is the hat, and then this was the darkness part, but now it's a sharp hat of death. What's sharp around here? Oh, a fork. Great. And then death, we can use this. Okay. All right, cool. Pretty fast update there. I'll try to get one more load request in, and then uh, we, we'll call it a video. Um, so, Robe of Darkness, replace it with a uh, Robe Burning of Peace. Burning Robe of Peace. Uh, I believe this was our robe, right? So, we need a something that represents burning. Oh, wait, there's a torch at the bottom here. And then we have a, uh, I think a dove, right, to represent peace? Okay. All right, pretty fast update there. Printing robe of peace, okay. I may have forgotten some of the connections we made. Okay, here we go, a load request. Oh, this is Pia again, okay. Uh, Pia's at the bottom here, so... This is... Well, let's start with the dagger. It was a dagger of... What was the branch again? Oh man, I don't remember this. <laughs> uh, what was that branch representing? Uh, magic? I think it was magic, right? The cloak was a... Darkness? Cloak of Darkness, right? Yeah, I, th I think I remember Darkness. And then, oh, there is something else associated with it. A bird, but what did I associate the bird with? Uh... Yikes. Uh, oh boy. <laughs> I... Is it Tiny Cloak of Darkness? Maybe? Uh, no, 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 I don't feel good about that. Oh, man. 
<laughs> oh, yikes. I'm honestly not sure. Oh, maybe it's a black cloak or a dark? Uh, I don't know. Oh, no, wait, it wasn't it something of the falcon? But then what would I put Tiny as? Ah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, okay, the ring, we can associate that with quickness at least, right? Or was it the falcon? Oh, man, I don't remember. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> let's just go with this. Okay, we got some errors. Okay, so the falcon was wrong and the quickness was wrong. Was it darkness or? Oh, man, I don't know. Anyway, I have to look back at the video, but, uh. Yep, I've made one mistake, so you're only allowed five mistakes. But uh, yeah, I think I'll end the video here. I think uh, we kind of get the gist of uh, gist of this game. Oh, here we have a new character. So now we have even more areas to fill in here. But uh, yeah, um, you know, it's a really fun time. I actually quite like this game. It's, uh, it's a pretty interesting concept. Again, you have to kind of trust that the player is going to play by the rules in order to get the full enjoyment of it, you know? Because, like, again, you could just, like, write everything down and just memorize everything that way or not even have to memorize anything just kind of write it in a list and then put it in the the load menus or whatever but yeah i think that's just kind of a uh, just i discourage people from playing that way it's uh it's it wouldn't be as fun you know but this is a really compelling game honestly i, I quite like it i wish there was like a Actually, well, I guess there kind of is like a scoring system, you know. I'm just going to click check mark here. There is kind of a scoring system with like the time operational and like, you know, seeing how many you get perfectly and how many requests you serve and all that. So, yeah, you could probably like uh, do like a speed run, I guess, so this in a sense. But, uh, you know, um, it just depends on how good your memorization skills are, too, I suppose. But, yeah, anyway, I think it's a really fun game. I think if you guys want to check it out yourself, which I highly encourage, uh, give it a few plays. Maybe you'll you'll find yourself uh, having a fun time with it. You can click in the link down in the description below to try the game out yourself. And, uh, hey, if you like this video, be sure to give me a like and uh, give this video a like. Sorry, don't, don't like me. Well, I would hope you'd like me, but uh, anyway, uh, you can give this video a like. And then, uh, hey, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah. This is a really fun time, and uh, I, I can't say that enough. And hey, uh, thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't know how to end videos. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.